Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program 1 on this channel. It has been a hot minute since I made a Kerbal Space Program 1 dedicated video, but here we are. And yes, would you believe it, Matt Lown is starting a new series that will never finish. Um, never ever do that ever in this uh, on this channel. But yes, I had an idea, guys. And that was uh, a little series, a mini-series called Fry Me to the Mum. You see... Through the pages of history, there have been lots of proposed moon missions that never actually came to fruition. I mean, let's face it, only one uh, program has ever actually landed on the moon, and that was the Apollo program. We're talking about crude landings here right now. Uh, obviously, we have Artemis that's currently in full swing. Artemis 2 happening soon, TM, then Artemis... Three is going to be the landing, and that's, you know, way, way in the future. But yeah, uh, there's lots of, like, proposed moon missions that uh, are really interesting. And I want to make videos of those. You know, coming up with video ideas for Kerbal Space Program 1, because I've done so much in this game, is kind of difficult sometimes, because I've done so much in this one solar system. There's only really so many things you can do. And uh, yeah, a lot of people want me to do more modded gameplay, and that is definitely something that I'm going to look into. Because, you know, KSP2, it's a bit... It's a bit rough around the edges, I think would be uh, an understatement. <laughs> and so I think we're going to go back to doing more KSP1 stuff, at least while, you know, KSP2 is a bit stagnated. As KSP2 sort of grows and becomes the game it was promised to be, I'll start gravitating more towards KSP2. But right now, I think KSP1 with mods is the superior game. Even with the level of mods that I run, which is, you know, a fairly lightly modded install. Just the visuals, it's just, and it's just what I'm used to as well. So that's what I'm thinking we're going to go with, you know, as the... As the majority. I mean, I did ask you guys, what would you guys prefer, right? Would you like to see more KSP2 or more KSP1? And you guys, you you didn't weren't very helpful <laughs> with that poll. So um, yeah, that's my uh, thesis. So anyway, what are we doing in this video? I'm going to now introduce this video's topic. Two minutes in, that is building a mini scale international space station. I've built a full scale international space station on this channel. It was it's one of my most popular videos, in fact. And uh, I figured, you know. It'd be nice to make a mini scale uh, international space station because you know full scale ones they exist everywhere and I just I don't know I quite like building micro scale stuff in Kerbal Space Program so let's do that and I didn't really it's very not to scale right I wanted to use actual crew cabins to make up the actual modules themselves things like the Capola module was quite difficult to make because obviously KSB has a Capola module unit but it's too big so I used the like a uh, fighter jet cockpit to serve as the Capola module you can sort of see it there one thing I did do I made a bit of a mistake for some reason this is like call this a Mandela effect or whatever you want to call it I just thought that the International Space Station had three solar arrays per side not two and like I'm kicking myself because obviously it's two how did I think it I don't know what kind of mindset I was in when I built this craft but yeah I apologize profusely but I like to think of this as me looking at the evolution of the history of the International Space Station thinking you know what I'm going to actually design adequate solar power from the get-go. Because obviously now, the solar arrays the International Space Station has are inadequate to supply the station with power. They have to build those like extra sort of roll-out solar arrays they keep adding. So I thought, you know what, maybe this is a good thing. Having, you know, uh, four extra large solar panels on the station from the get-go would uh, serve us well. And here we are with our very realistic rocket launching. <laughs> Yeah, so credit where credit is due, you know, the uh, the launch sound effects and all that of KSP2 are vastly superior to KSP1. But for missions like this, I just, I think KSP1 is kind of more suited. So yes, as you can see, I'm doing a single launch International Space Station. I'm using the same trick I used for my full size single launch International Space Station video. And that is uh, having the main truss be on a rotor. And it's like, <laughs> it starts off parallel to the rest of the station. And then it's, uh, you know rolls out and like rotates so that it's uh you know what i mean like a 90 degree angle anyway you guys will see that unfold as this video unfolds in fact terrible joke that was but yes i still haven't got to the point of this video and that is i wanted to start with the aries mission so basically the sls rocket um is is like an evolution of the aries rocket obviously the aries is like famously the most weird ugly crude rocket ever launched it's that one that has the single space shuttle srb launching an orion capsule there's a photo on screen to show you what i mean you guys have seen this footage right um but the aries program it wasn't just that like that was the only one that launched but we had the aries 
5, which ended up becoming what is essentially the SLS today. And the Ares program as a whole was going to launch lots of missions, both with Ares 1, Ares 5. And a lot of these missions involved the... Uh, involvement of the International Space Station. And so, in order for me to kind of showcase the Ares missions as they were planned by NASA, I need an International Space Station on this KSP save. So here we are, 5 minutes 20 seconds into the video. I get to why I'm doing this silly thing, which is building a mini-scale ISS. I thought about doing a full-scale ISS, but I mean, I've already done that. And I feel like, you know, People enjoy the mini scale stuff, I think, from time to time. So I thought, let's just combine the two things. Uh, International Space Station, mini scale. And, uh, you know, that's uh, where we are today. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's coasting to uh, low carbon orbit nice and easily. It was not a big deal. Obviously, you know, it's kind of an awkward shape to launch as a single launch vehicle, you know, obviously. So I had a very, very weird and wide and unrealistic fairing. But apart from that, I think the scale of the rocket wasn't too bad. And here we are in a low curb in orbit. As you might have seen, I detached the lower stage and then boosted it away because, yes, it has a probe core, so it can deorbit itself. The uh, solar bears will be safe, no debris left in orbit today. But first things first, we need to get this thing fully deployed and extended and ready to. Uh, accept dockings from Ares missions. But of course, that won't be in this video. I feel like this is like a epic enough scale of a project to be its own video, you know. And uh, here we are, by the way, the magical moment of it rotating into its final formation, albeit, you know, it's got too many uh, solar arrays and not enough radiators. I forgot, I completely forgot to add the uh, the little arrays that are on the, uh, you know, main truss structure where the solar panels are. So apologies for that. But I mean, I guess, I've now confessed that this is not a, you know, true-to-life ISS replica because, of course, we have the extra solar arrays. So I don't need to upgrade this in a few decades' time and uh, add the rollout solar arrays. So if anything, this is a superior ISS to the one that, uh, you know, we have the, the world built. Uh, now, I did a bit of a mistake here. I was trying to weld some struts to the truss here to stop it from rotating. But as you can see, it wasn't working and I couldn't figure out why. And I later realized, watching the footage back, it's because I had the rotation tool set, not the, uh, you know, the little button you press to place items. So then I will go back and fix that. But for now, I, I couldn't place any struts to keep the whole structure, you know, stable. But yeah, here we are on the ISS. We are looking at the Capola module. Sorry for the nauseating footage speed. But yeah. I thought about ending the video there, but I thought, you know what? This just feels like a bit of an anticlimax, right? I've just done the whole mission. It took no time at all. And I think one of the uh, most, uh, I don't know, iconic things about the International Space Station, those photos with the space shuttle docked to it. So I thought, let's just build and fly a space shuttle and dock it to the ISS. Not before, obviously, adding a Kerbal to the end of the... Uh, so-called Canada I'm just there uh, I thought you know what it, I just I gotta go but a bit a, a bit above and beyond you know in order to make this video really worthwhile and you know to justify making it its own video rather than just incorporating it into my the first of my fry me to the Mun videos I don't know how long this series is going to go on for I'm just going to accept that I just basically never finished series on this channel. So I don't know how long it's going to go on for, but I've got a few ideas, right? We've got Ares, we've got Artemis, which is still ongoing. There was a plan for uh, Soyuz to do a moon landing. There was also a moon landing featuring Gemini. There's so many opportunities for fun and excitement. Just to try to distract you guys with the fact that I failed to do a suicide burn properly with that stage. We'll just pretend it recovered successfully and get to build in the space shuttle. Yes, it is not going to be a full size, full scale space shuttle because, of course, that would be ridiculous. It would absolutely dwarf the space station. So instead, I'm going to build a mini scale space shuttle, which I've never done before, unless you count my Reliant Robin space shuttle, which I, I wouldn't count personally. And also, I forgot to enable stock vessel, so I didn't have the slim shuttle at my disposal. But I thought, you know what? Let's press on anyway. Now, I'm not making it like look like a real NASA style space shuttle or Buran style space shuttle which was let's face it an attempt to mimic the NASA style space shuttle so it's only got the one main engine and uh yeah as you can see the SRB is not going to be completely to scale I did try with the thumper but it just a test flight revealed that that just wasn't enough delta v so I had to go with the slightly larger or well, comically larger SRBs for the launch itself uh but yeah I think it's like it, it, it fairly it encapsulates the uh, the thesis of the space shuttle.
fairly well, I like to hope. Now here we are uh, on the launch pad, but we're going to just time warp around to a point with the space station. Is it an appropriate time to launch the shuttle? I think there is good enough, so let's launch. And we are well on our way. Yes, Jebediah, Bob and Bill are on board the space station, which is like three of the four main Kerbals. So I thought, let's just get Valentina to join the crew. And we got all four main Kerbals because, spoiler alert, one of the first, or in fact, you know, the first after the uncrewed test flights of the Ares program would have been, you know, to use the Orion Space Shuttle. Orion Space Shuttle, the Orion Space Capsule to do ISS crew transfer. So I thought, hey, we've got some crew on the space station that we really need to land on the Mun, right? You know, Jebediah, Bill, Bob, Val, they're all the rock stars of the Kerbal Space Program universe. We need them to do the first Mun landing. So, you know, now I can build my Ares 1 replica and uh, go and get the crew back. From the from the International Space Station. Obviously, I guess the uh, the I haven't built my Orion replica yet, but I'm guessing I'm going to use the Mark III, co the Apollo style cockpit, basically the command module, which only got space for three Kerbals. So I guess we also need the space shuttle to uh, bring the fourth Kerbal back to Kerbin. Now, to be perfectly transparent with you guys, I haven't tested this space shuttle. What you're watching me doing right now is uh, the very first flight of this vehicle, in fact. So I have no idea if it can actually glide back to the Kerbal Space Center. Uh, I hope it can, because I'm a bit screwed if it can't. But hey, pads out the uh, the next video's runtime if it can't, because I've got to build a second rescue vessel. So really, you know, it worked out well. That's one of the things I have to do as a YouTuber, right, is to pad out the runtime. And of course, ask you guys to like the video if you are enjoying the ride so far. And of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed already to uh, get this, whatever you want to call it, in your subscription fees whenever I get around to making it. I have been a bit slack, I will admit, on the upload schedule as of late, but not for good reason. Uh, well, not without good reason <laughs> would be the correct way of phrasing that. I've just been super duper busy. But I've been making major steps in like rearranging my personal life and my personal job to allow me to make more YouTube videos, basically. I don't want to, you know, just dive into YouTube full time because that's a very scary prospect. And I'm pain painfully aware that the majority of internet careers, uh, they don't last. So I don't want to like lose my foot in the door of, you know, my actual real life day job. But I'm like switching up, like trying to sh sort of move my hours around in such a way that it will like facilitate me being able to make more YouTube videos. It's all still a bit of a work in progress. So I can't really say much more than that. But I'm hoping by middle of June it will all be sorted. And then I can bump my video upload schedule back to two to three videos per week. One of those videos will be a space this week, uh, and uh, the other one slash two will be KSP1 and or KSP2. Both, I would imagine. I think for now, I'm going to go with the results of the poll, and that is a 50-50 split of Kerbal Space Program 1 and Kerbal Space Program 2. And then, you know, as KSP2 improves and evolves, I might put more effort into that, or if it continues to not be as good, I'll put more into KSP1. But I'm really, really... Uh, gonna look into doing more modded gameplay because I think a lot of people have, you know, noticed and I appreciate this view that I've kind of done most of what can be done in the uh, the stock game. Like a lot of the missions like this one are not that difficult, I, I admit. I've done lots of challenging missions as well. Like, yeah, I've done a, uh, oh, how many seats? I think it was like 208 seat SSTO to ELU. Like, yeah, I can do a 500 seat SSTO to Ely if I wanted to. It's the same skills that apply. Like, it's just scaling it up. And at this point, it's like, it doesn't take that much more difficulty once you kind of reach that threshold. I don't know if this makes any sense. But I feel like I've hit the skill limit in terms of what I can do on this channel. So now I just do silly things. Like building mini scale international space stations in order for me to do kind of missions that involve recreating the Ares program and stuff like that. So, yeah, at the moment I'm doing sort of silly things in KSP1 that won't just be completely obliterated by some inexplicable Kraken attack, as would be the case in KSP2. Uh, so, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my story. Now, one thing I did notice, I docked the wrong way up. I wanted the space shuttle to be kind of tail down relative to kind of the, uh, the, is it the Poisk? No, the Poisk has been undocked. 
what's taking its place? Whatever. I wanted the tail to be down relative to this frame of the video. Maybe the poise cut is still there. I, I forget. I forget my International Space Station trivia every now and then. You know what, you guys? We're 15 minutes in, near enough. I'm happy to just go off and say, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to pause the video and research. I'm just going to talk about whatever pops into my mind. But here we are, docking just here. Now, as you can see, the docking port is a bit skew with. Can you see? The one on the station. It's angled. I was like, oh. So I tried to adjust the alignment angle to try and rotate the shuttle to be kind of, you know, 90 degrees to the main body of the International Space Station, or the mini-scale International Space Station, I suppose. And it didn't work. It was just angling it weirdly. So I don't know if that's a glitch or just a thing, like a quirk with the inline docking port for the Mark 1 size part. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, the shuttle is docked. We can finish up finishing the space station now. So we can inflate the inflatable module. We can get Bill Kerman out on EVA, this time actually being successful in welding a strut to the truss structure to well and truly cement it in place. And yeah, I think that much, I think that pretty much wraps up everything I needed to say and what my idea was for this series. Do you guys have any like, you know, leave comments below about any obscure moon landing, moon landing, moon landing missions that you've heard and maybe want to see me recreate. I think the Lunex mission is definitely one of my favorites. And that is a definitely very doable in KSP2. One of the few things that I would be willing to do in KSP2. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe Fry Mission of the Moon could be across two games, right? 50-50. And the stuff that requires the ISS I can do in KSP1. But yeah, I'm rushing now because I'm reaching the end of my end screen. But yeah, there's names on the left. My Patreon members and channel members who are like generously support this channel financially. I eternally, sincerely thank you and that's the end of the video. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>